Ego Patricus Laterensis et sum su doctor po blasoniae a diemiensis et continuo in Anglia. Hello everyone, I'm Patrick Lather, I'll be your master for blasonry today and I shall continue in English. Because you know, you've got to have that little bit of scholarship, right? Um, so this is th basically a basic introduction to blason. This will be um, a little bit of charge group theory to a large amount of charge group theory, depending on how people feel comfortable with this, before we go on to how to structure blasons, how to put it all together for everyone. So, um, are people, is there anyone here who is uncomfortable with charge group theory? If you're new to heraldry, and you don't know what a primary, secondary charge group is, you're not sure how to identify them, then that's a yes, and I'm seeing that from a few people, so I'll make sure to cover that one well. That's me. <laughs> Are there, is there anyone here who is sufficiently new to heraldry that they're not sure what I mean by the term ordinary? As in, this is an ordinary. And I'm seeing a couple of hands going up as well. No worries, I'll make sure to cover that one as well. So what I'll do is I'll kick off by sharing the screen. I'll make sure I can see chat as well before I continue on. And that's a gallery view so I can see everyone. Beautiful, everyone can see my screen, yes? Fantastic, okay. So, first up, Sina. Sina, if you want to do heraldry, it should be in one in your bookmarks folder. It contain it's it's the current rule set. It gets updated as new rules get made in. Uh, keep an eye on the uh, cover letters for the letters of acceptance and return that come out m roughly monthly for any new precedents, any new rules, any calls for commentary on. So we've been chatting about X. What do you all reckon? Can you find any documentation on particular? parts of period heraldic practice. Also, it's just come to mind, if anyone is having trouble with my dialect or my accent, please tell me. It's not strictly standard English. Other Australians also think I talk weird. I grew up in the hills outside of Perth. I might wind up talking a bit fast and swallow the odd vowel or consonant. So if you don't understand me for any particular uh, terminology, any word, Yes, you just have no idea what I've just said. Please, please stop me and I'll go back and we can cover that one again. No worries. So, charge group theory is the basis of Cena, the standards for the evaluation of names and armory as far as evaluating the armory side of things go. We base charge group theory on period practice, both perceived through extant examples as well as written in the various uh, manuals of arms, there were actual period textbooks written about heraldry. Some of them are weird, some of them describe things we've never actually seen, um, and some of them may well be post-period forgeries of varying degrees of fidelity. Um, on the other hand, we can look through period rolls of arms, through period Wappenbuch, through period armorials, and look at surviving examples of period depictions of period arms and compare them to the codices and see how well things match up, as well as see how well things match up with Victorian ideas of heraldry. Um, as a slight digression, when the SCA was new before I was born, uh, the Victorian ideas of heraldry, especially as espoused by Fox Davies, were uh, among the most common references people had available to them. Uh, Fox Davies' uh, Complete Guide to Heraldry is a pretty good start, especially because Fox Davies says that uh, we've got a lot better in the last few years, this being published in like 1890 or so, and got away from some of the uh, early Victorian romantic, complete chival chivalric ideal sort of silliness of lines are always mean you're courageous, etc., etc., etc. Um, but based on Fox Davies, based on uh, ordinaries, based on memorials, 
we put together charge group theory. And charge group theory also describes how we blazon things. They, because, uh, because the blazon is of course the verbal, the textual description of what we actually see in the coat of arms, in the on, on the device, as the badge, whatever it is we're trying to blazon. So, if you want to go back and have a look at this one, and I sincerely recommend you do, especially if you're fairly new to this one, this is Appendix I, that's I for Ivan in Cena, um, which is all about charge group theory. And it kicks off with a basic introduction, saying the style and conflict rules are built around the idea of a charge group. A charge group is a group of charges of approximately the same size and visual weight that act as a single unit. Organizing an, item, an armorial design in terms of charges may not be particularly uh, period, but is a modern SE invention. We do this to make things easier for ourselves. Um, it's our attempt to codify what we see happening. So the charge group theory kicks off with the first one, funnily enough, called the primary charge group. To quote directly from Cena, the primary charge group is the group is the charge or group of charges which are directly on the field in the visual center of the shield. Not every device has a primary charge, but most do. The primary charge group will typically be the largest charge or charges on the field. And one of the things I've done in preparation for this class is gone to my kingdom's roll of arms. The Lockhart Roll of Arms is a fantastic source. Uh, it is maintained by a number of people around the place. They do fantastic work. And so long as I reference it, it's not plagiarism, it's research. Um, please keep, uh, please do note that I am not downloading or otherwise using these images. I'm merely showing them off so I, get a, get a, so I don't have to deal with uh, copyright issues. Um, yeah, pretty much. That's the, that's the disclaimer. That's the source of all the various images you will see me showing up during the part through, during the class course of the class. And the first couple images are two examples where there is no primary charge, just a field division, such as Cotex. This one, we have no primary charge group. We've got a bunch of ways of painting the field. Uh, would anyone have a guess as to what I would call this field division? Chevronelli? Close. Chevronelli inverted. Oh. Period. Chevron's point up. Chevron, uh, because it's business end goes towards the top for a lot of charges. So if you think about um, the Chevrons on, say, a sergeant's sleeves, that goes towards the business end being the fist. Um, Another example where we have no primary charge group. And one reason why I've chosen these ones is because these are all registered devices. So they're all blazoned following the SCA conventions. This is Sir Ulf, who is over in the Crescent Isles, for those who may have wandered in from outside of Lockhart. That's our term for what is mundanely New Zealand. And again, no primary charge group. Anyone care to have a guess as to what I would call this field division? Quarter? Close, quarterly. Quarterly. If it was an ordinary, instead of being divided up into quarters, I would call that ordinary charge a cross. Ordinaries and field divisions are described quite well in the uh, SEA heraldry primer. You can find that from the Laurel homepage. I do recommend having a good read through it if you're over our New Herald because it will des describe and show examples of how field divisions relate to ordinaries. So quarterly and across are the related field division and ordinary in this case. In Cotex example here, we've got Chevronelli inverted. If I had a single red inverted chevron on a gold background that would be the ordinary associated with this multiple diminutive idea of dividing up the field uh, if i just had a single line of division but no actual chunk or stripe of color that would be per chevron inverted 
as an idea of going from field division through ordinary, through what is often termed a field treatment, being ha having lots and lots and lots of stripes or blocks or squares or diamonds or checks or whatnot all over the field. That's a little bit of a digression, but are people still with me on that? Or does anyone have any questions that they would like to raise at this time? Going once, going twice, and we'll move on, no worries. So, getting back to primary charge groups, Lyocena, so we've got charge group, the tr primary charge group is the charge or group of charges which are directly on the field in the visual center. Now, discussing ordinaries and what ordinaries are is important because the next paragraph kicks off by using this term. If the armory has at least one central ordinary, they are the primary charge group. A central ordinary is one of the ordinaries that crosses the center of the field. And by those, I mean things like a cross, a bend, a fess, a pail, a saltier. These big, simple, bold, easy to recognize charges that cross the center of the shield. An example is not that one so much, or that one, or let's see where I've got. There we go. Here's a cross. It's an ordinary. It's formed of nice straight lines or lines that, are, that follow the edge of the field. This is a central ordinary. It crosses the center of the field. This does not have a central ordinary, but it does have a primary charge group. I'll get back to it later. This does have a primary charge group that's formed of diminutives of a particular ordinary. This charge group must be the primary charge group because it crosses the center of the shield. It's part of a central ordinary. Brian's, yeah, sure. I, I would say on second thought, yes. Same argument as Katerina. And that Brian's has two chevronelles. The chevronel is the diminutive form of the chevron. The chevron is a central ordinary because it's one of the ordinaries. By definition, it's, it's included on the lists. It's about a dozen different ordinaries. Um, and it crosses the center of the field. Um, for those... To, to skip ahead for a bit, you do have ordinaries that do not cross the center of the shield. These are referred to as peripheral ordinaries as opposed to central ordinaries. And a peripheral ordinary does not touch the middle of the shield. Most of the outline of a peripheral ordinary is defined by or formed by the external edge of the shield, the outer edge of the field. An example is this, where we can see that there is no central ordinary. The big, bold, butch, easily recognizable charge in the center of the field that's probably the primary charge group uh, is the what? Anyone? Geese combatant? Not quite geese, even angrier. Swans. So I've got these two angry swans in the middle of them, a primary charge group. I've got an or, one ordinary on this device. That's the peripheral ordinary being the Bourdieu. Another example, this, is, this has a single, easily recognizable, obvious charge in the middle of everything that crosses the middle of the field. And it's the, anyone? Primary charge. It's the primary charge. How would you describe that charge? Feel free to use like common English rather than fancy fied blazon if you prefer. It's a lion's paw in gold. Yep, yep. Um, yeah, that'll be the, the the lion's paw and claw, the the, the jam, the, the, the claw, forearm yeah. of the of the BC. That's the primary charge group. There's an ordinary present here. It's not a central ordinary. It's the chief, and I can tell it's not a central ordinary because it doesn't cross the center of the field. Are uh, people cool with this? Mm. Awesome. Awesome. So heading back to Cena, um, if the armory has at least one central ordinary, 
I'm going to note that at least one, so I can have bendlets, I can have chevronelles, I can have crosslets that are interlaced with each other. They are the primary charge group. This is true even if there are other charges around it, all the ordinaries are drawn narrowly. Yeah? So if I have a cross and then I have stuff around the cross, that cross, that's still my primary charge group because it's my central ordinary. If there are no central ordinaries and the armory has a central charge or charges, they are the primary charge group. Remember the swans. No central ordinary, but I've got charge or charges that are in the center of the field. They're pretty big, they're pretty obvious. They, they are my primary charge group on this device. Uh, this is true even if the charges are on opposite sides of a field division, like the swan. Um, do, 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 do. Going back to Morosias, no field division. Lion jump straight in the middle. Going back to the swans, we got swans on either side of the field division, but they're still in the middle of the field. People cool with this. Now that I've had a bit of a chance to explain the whole crossing the middle of the field sort of thing. Everyone good? Right, I'm seeing nodding heads that are nodding. Yeah, beauty, no worries. Uh, keeping on. Uh, do, 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 do. If there are no central ordinaries or central charges, but there are semi of charges on the field, those charges are the primary charge group. Do people know what I mean by the term semi? I've got a couple nods and a couple of shakes. Uh, a semi, lit, it derives from the French verb meaning to throw. Like you just throw a whole bunch of little baby charges all over the field. Going back to this ones, all these gold spots, I could be too pedantic for words, count up all those spots and say how many there are, or I could just say, there's lots. There's a lot of spots. And this way I would say it's a semi of Rondel's ore or a semi of Besant's, or I just say the border is ghouls, besant -y. It's got a lot of gold spots. Isn't uh, a semi more than six? Isn't that what the definition is? Uh, not quite. Okay. Um, uh, semi has no, gives, semi versus more than six charges doesn't give you a, a, a clear difference for or a DC, a distinct change for number of charges. I can, however, say I want to have 10 spots in a downward pointing triangle, um, four, three, two, one and say it's 10 spots because for some reason 10 spots is a number that's very important to me. Um, I would look at that and go, okay, that's cool. Um, I just put that as a semi unless you really, really want to say it's 10 spots for three, two, one. Uh, an example of this is the arms, I believe, of the Duke of Cornwall, which has 15 gold spots on a black background, five, four, three, two, one. I'd look at that and go, that's, that's just a lot of spots and I could put those on the field whatever damn well way I please as the artist. But uh, what's important to the Duke of Cornwall back in the day was that it'd be 15 gold spots all in a downwards pointing triangle. So it's... it's Table 15 bezels, black field, bearing 15 gold discs. Yeah. It can be a bit hard to where to draw the line. I believe I've got one example of... There we go. Here is an example of a mullety field. I have, however, a primary charge group here. Any ideas what the primary charge group might be? Feel free to just describe it in common language rather than blazon if you prefer. Is that a chimera? I'm not sure. I think that's an angry flaming bull with with like, you know, chicken legs. Um, it might be, it's definitely some sort of heraldic chimera. It's definitely some sort of monster, what we put together out of the abattoir, the slaughterhouses, um, bits of leftover stuff that's going to become sausages that don't look too closely, box. Um, but yeah, if we didn't have that random gold monster on the field, then that semi of, of uh, silver mullets that would be my primary charge group. But because we have something that's big, obvious, crosses the center of the field, that's my, my primary charge group. 
and my semi becomes a secondary charge group, even though when we blazon it, and we'll get to putting it together later on, we describe the semi with the, uh, the, the background that it's on. Ah, someone wants to join. Admit them, no worries. Hello. I'll, uh, I'll wait till you connect to audio. Can you hear us there, Bella? You appear to be muted. Feel free to drop a drop us a note in the text. Um, yeah, no worries. Cool. Okay, getting back to it. So, do, 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 do. so we've covered semis of charges on the field. If there are two or more charges of similar visual weight or size in the center of the field which are touching, they are sustained and all part of the primary charge group. Uh, there are a couple of examples given. So we have the argent a bend sable, argent two bendlets sable. The bend or the bendlets are the primary charges. So looking at Katarina, we've got bendlets. Looking at Brown, we've got chevronelles. Those are central ordinaries. Those are by definition the primary charge. Um, examples with lions. The lions are the primary charges. Uh, they've got the, an example with Argent semi of lion sable, so white field, whole bunch of little black lions and lions all over the place, and a cross azure. The cross is the primary charge because it's the central ordinary. The semi of lions, because there's a central ordinary, cannot be the primary charge, even though it gets described first. One reason why we call it the primary charge is because you mention it first in the blazon. So if you see a blazon and you read through it, they define the field, they define any stuff that's special done to the field, like any divisions or any semis on the field, and then they describe the primary charge group, prime first. Everyone cool with this? All right. Uh, Drago Mira, I know you joined us a little bit late. Um, first off, g'day, thanks for coming on down. Uh, good to know you can hear. Um, just so I know um, if you might be at sea, are you cognizant of charge group theory? Are you a little bit shaky? Would you like, a, would you like me to go back and redefine primary charges? Cool, no worries. I uh, see that you, yeah, you reckon you're good and we'll keep on moving then, awesome. Um, there are a few, um, a few more examples given, a few more bits of description about how you can, how you draw these, how you identify things, especially in period uh, sources, where there's a divided field where the areas aren't even or uh, as, as an example, consider a per chevron division. So you've got the point of the chevron pointing upwards. You've got it being a very tall and narrow per chevron division. And you have something wide, like a lion passant. You have three of them, one in each section of the field. Each of those lions will be able to fit into different amounts of area on the field. So they could well be drawn different sizes, but the three of them, they're part of the same charge group. They're part of the same blob of charges on the field. So even though things could be a little bit different in size, as long as they're not wildly different in size, they're part of the same group. People cool with this one. Nice. Awesome. All right. Um, do, 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 do. In armor is a divided field, the two potential situations. Each of the charges is entirely in a single section of the field or one or more charges overlay the fit lines of division. In the first situation, so there are numerous charges in the primary charge group, but they're, on either, but they're entirely on a single section of the field. The charges are collectively the primary charge group. This is true even when the bottom charge is drawn larger than the others, as is common in period depictions. This is true even when one of the divisions contains a semi of charges. True even if you use blazon terms like in chief or the line of division is blazoned as enhanced. 
The second situation where one or more charges overlie the line of division, those charges are the primary charge group and the other charges are in a secondary charge group. We'll get to secondaries in a moment. I talked about peripheral ordinaries before and it gives examples here. The chief, the base, the border, and the all, they are they have their edges defined by or formed by the edge of the field. Uh, and they can never be primary charges. If there are only peripheral ordinaries or no charges whatsoever in a piece of armory, it is known as field primary armory. Uh, it is discussed in greater detail and has special conflict rules, which I won't really be going into um, because I'm mainly talking about blazon and especially the order and the grammar of how to do it in this case. Um, secondary charge groups. So before I go into secondaries, are people cool with primaries? Does anyone have any questions about primary charge groups? We're all good. For those who are cool for uh, their voices to be part of the recording, uh, if you'd like to join me in a little bit of back with back and forth and just and cementing of the of the lesson and tasks verbally, uh, James, I see you're uh, you're feeling game, mate. Awesome. Not really. <laughs> so, I'm not going to ask you to blazon the entire uh, entire arms, but going from what we have. Is there a field division? Yes. Cool. Can you name that field division? No. No worries. That is a division per pale. Uh, is there a primary charge group? Yes. How can you tell? Because we have the two Chevronels together mm -hmm. and they cover the center of the field. Bingo. Awesome. Next one up. Is there a field division? No. Correct. This is just a regular, simple Argent field. Nice, easy. So to blazon this one, we would, of course, start with the field. So this would just be Argent, comma. And then we'd talk about the primary charge group. Um, is there a primary charge group? Yes, the diagonal lines. Fantastic. Uh, would you happen to know what how, what the names of those diagonal stripes are? No. Yeah, no worries. If there, there was just one of them, that would be a bend. Yep. Because there are three baby ones, they are three bendlets. Bendlets. Mm -hmm. If that was not a stripe, but a, sim a diagonal line that divided the field into two pieces, that would be a field division, and that division would be per band. Again, this is covered in the heraldry primer, talking about divisions and ordinaries and their diminutives. Um, so to put the blazon together on this one, I would go with the usual pattern, which is field, anything special to the field, primary charge, describing the number and tincture of the primary charge. So. We've identified the primary charge are the three bendlets. What's the tincture of those three bendlets? Azure. Bingo. Would you care to have a bash at putting the blazon all together for us, James? Uh, Argent, uh, three bendlets azure. Perfect. Done. Perfectly blazoned coat of arms. No worries. I went and I've, as you can see, I've got a lot, a lot of examples and they get more complex as time goes on. So they're not always going to be as simple as this one. So as we move on, we got Conrad Hildebrand. First up, is there a field division, James? Yes. Awesome. Uh, can you name it? Ooh, um, no. <laughs> Does it look like something we may have seen before? Yes, but it's um, around the other way. Bingo. It, yep. It's per bend sinister. Okay. Bingo. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Nicolette. Um, in fact, Nicolette, thank you for volunteering. Yeah. We'll take this one off, James. Um, <laughs> is there, uh, which, which one of those two tinctures on either side of the per bend line, which one do you think you'd blazon first 
and why? Uh, the Argent, mm -hmm. uh, because it's at the top of the shield, like it's, the, and it's on the right hand side. Yep. We tend, when we're looking at field divisions, we blazon the chief most and dexter most part of the divided field first. Think of it like you're painting it and you're right handed and you don't want to smudge the back of your hat, the, the, the side of your hand in the damp paint and smudge that all over the rest of the shield. So you obviously you start in the top left hand corner if you're looking at it. And that's the chief most because it's up towards the top and it's the dexter most because it's to the right of the person holding the shield. If you're looking at it, it looks like the left, but the person who's holding the shield, it's their right. Is everyone clear on that bit? Cool. So that would be per Ben sinister. And the first bit, first tincture we, we label is Argent. And the second tincture is Nikki. Gulls. Perfect. Now that's to find the field. Is there a primary charge group? No. I would say there is. Aren't they the two um, because they're different charges? Ah, but they can, they can be different charges, but still in the same group. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so in this case, we've got the two, two, two disparate charges and are on other, either side of a line of division, but the group still crosses the center. This is why we, we talk about charge group theory rather than just charge theory. Um, so I'd say that the, there's a, there's a ch primary charge group present. What charges would be in the charge group, do you reckon, Nicolette? I don't know what the castle is called. I don't know if it's a fort or a rook or a, what the name of the castle tower is. And we call that a, a tower. A uh, tower, there you go. <laughs> Bingo. And the other member of the group is? The sword. Bingo. So we've got the tower and the sword, and they're part of the group. Um, what, what tinctures are they? Sable and Argent. Awesome. So there's the, 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 common, the pattern of Blazin goes, to find the field, to find stuff done to the field, to find anything thrown across the field. Then we start talking about the primary charge group. And this one is a little bit more complicated than the previous ones but it's still fairly simple because we've got a per bend sinister line and we just put one thing on one side and the other thing on the other side. So we're not having some weird arrangement on the field where we've got a blast and, and describe that. So would you care to have a go, Nikki? Just give it a shot. How would you think about blazoning this one? Um, Argent, per bend sinister, and ghouls? No. The two colours should have been together, shouldn't they? I don't know. Um, Start with the division. So, per Ben Sinister, Argent and Ghouls. Yep. A Sable Tower and a Sword Argent. Very, very close. One thing you did differently with, this, with the, the Tower and the Sword is you changed where you put the tincture. We, we put the tincture uh, after the charge. So a tower sable and a sword argent. You had sable tower and argent sword. Mm -hmm. um, we go with, to find the, to define the charge type, then we describe, put in the various um, things that describe the charge, such as number, tincture, posture, arrangement, all these things. Is that the typical um, position for a sword? Yep. The default yeah. position for the sword is vertical with the business end pointing towards chief. For pretty much any long charge that has a business end, business end goes towards, goes towards chief. The main, uh, uh, the main exception are arrows where the business end points towards base. You have a question, Patty. The same group because it's on the same level? of the same level that that's one way of thinking about this one yes and remember how i st was talking about and uh, althea loved it the idea of um you're, you're painting it 
if you're painting this in coats, you paint the field first, and then you paint the stuff that goes on the field. So the primary charge group is going directly on the field and crosses the center. So if by hue, if by the same group, because on the same level, you mean it's the same layer of coat, uh, la la layer of paint, then yes. If not, could I ask you to clarify that, please? While that's happening, I'm going to pour myself some tea. I'm going to assume then that I was right in saying that it we're talking about like layers of paint and or remember those cut out bits of felt or cardboard you could stack on to each other to make various, uh, various quick and dirty images. Same, same, same deal. Primary charges are big. They're obvious. They cross the center of the field, either themselves or the group that they're in. And they're the same layer. They go directly on the field. People cool with that. Yeah. Well, I was saying while it's muted is uh, it's plate, toast, butter. I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch the last few words there, mate. Uh, the way he's explained to me is plate, toast, butter. Exactly, exactly. Plate, <laughs> toast, butter. Yeah, yeah. So we've we've, defined, we've we've been talking about defining the toast because the toast is a bit harder to define than the plate, which is the field. Um, we'll get onto butter shortly, but you've also got to to keep the breakfast metaphor. So imagine you've gone to, uh, it's a fairly run-of-the-mill motel, but you get breakfast chucked in and you've ticked the box for toast and they've given you the butter and the jam and some marmalade in those little single serve little packs. And that's also on the plate. So the stuff that goes around the primary charge group, we call the secondary charge group. Are people cool with me moving on to secondary? Or let's see what let's have a look and see what I've got for the next one. Ah, this one is a little bit more challenging because this is one of the examples of what's called a charge group overall. It's also referred to as debrusing. Some people will refer to it as surmounting, but the more standard SCA blazon term is overall. Here I have a field. It is divided. It is divided quarterly. Um, if I was to have a look at the field, uh, Shinjo, can pick on you. Shinjo, what what tinctures are the field? Uh, well, we have three. Um, uh, ghouls. I've no. got two in the field. I've got two. A, sorry, so your ghoul and or. Bingo. What's the black thing? Is it part of the field or is it an ordinary or is something else? Uh, it's an ordinary across. Hmm. Yeah, um, is it a central ordinary? Uh, yes. How it's can you tell? The, it's covering the center of the field. Hmm. Exactly. Uh, does that make it a primary charge or something else? I'm not sure because you've got the wolf right there. Ah, the wolf is a something else entirely. Let's let's keep uh -huh. building up the sandwich. So we've had a look at the bread, which is the field, and we've got it divided up. What would you call that division? That's quarterly. Bingo. Which one of the two tinctures would you describe first, and why? Um, ghouls first, because mm -hmm. it's on the person who's holding its right, and it's in the top. Bingo. Perfect. How would you describe just the field of it in Blasm? There is a way you can say it has been swapped around, but I can't recall what it is because um, you have... We don't need yeah. to talk about counter-changing here yet. Just yeah. the field. Just the quarterly field that's the, the toast, the, the, the bit of bread that everything else is on top. Well, we have quarterly ghouls and or. Yep. Perfectly done. What would come next in the blazon, do you reckon? Remember, we're building a sandwich. I'd say the cross. Mm -hmm. 
yep, it's a primary charge group. It's cross comes uh, next. Uh, across um, Sable. Yep. And then we get to the new part, which is the wolf. The wolf is overall, and we describe it as such. If the wolf was entirely on the cross, then the wolf would be a tertiary charge because a tertiary charge, which we'll get to in greater detail later on, a tertiary charge is contained entirely on top of another charge. So I think we've a, done that too, actually, that tertiary charge. <laughs> no, we've described it in various other bits before. Um, yep. In fact, if we remember back to the swans over here, all those yeah. spots, they are tertiary charges because they are contained entirely within the border. Okay. Again, looking at morosia, these bees or wasps, these whatever insects these may be, they are entirely contained within the chief. But that's not the case with the wolf. The wolf is not entirely contained on the cross, so the wolf is not a tertiary charge. If the wolf was on the field, the wolf couldn't be a primary charge because you can only have one primary charge group and that is taken up by the cross. If I had four wolves, one in each section, they would be a secondary charge group because they're surrounding the primary charge group and are also entirely on the field. This charge, the wolf here is overall, it is on top of primary, it is on top of any secondaries that may be there, there happen to be no secondary charges present, and also on top of the field. It's over everything. So this is one way you can try, try and get two primary charge groups, but one's got to smush on top of the other. Mm. And that's what's being done here. So to build on the earlier part of the blazon, this is quarterly ghouls and ore across sable and overall a wolf, sergeant, allant, argent. Is sergeant, allant the attitude? Bingo. Sergeant means it's sitting down. Alalant is not a period posture. Please don't use it. Please don't recommend it. There are lots of lovely wolf postures that are in her period heraldry. This is a period heraldry. This involves six shooters and sheriffs walking down the Lone Star Corral and are calling people out. It's an entirely separate historical milieu. This is your lonesome canid out on the prairie in, I don't know, some state with a prairie like Maine, Arkansas, Rhode Island, Texas. Oh, one of them. They have prairies in them, just like Saskatchewan. Remember and there are they Americans have lonesome the canids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is, uh, levity aside, this is, uh, uh, it's a posture <laughs> that is a step from period practice. Please discourage its use if you can but do so gently so that you're not the mm. wow the heralds are mean because i can't have a howly wolf yeah yeah cool uh questions queries and comments um feel free to give me grief about my terrible john wayne impersonation yeah you've got a few comments in the chat in the chat <laughs> oh, you gotta sure remember like there are Yep, yep, rolling prairies in Maine. Look, I hear there's lots of pine forest up there, also lobsters. I don't know how lobsters would go on prairies. I imagine they'd be able to give the the prairie dogs a run for their money. <laughs> yep. Yeah, cool. Anywho, moving on. So, that's charges overall. And from memory, my next example it involves primary and secondary charges. Fantastic. So I'll make a note of where that one is and head on back to Cena and we'll start talking secondaries. So secondary charge group is a single charge or group of charges directly on the field. So it has to be still on the field, right? Around the primary charges. Therefore you cannot have a secondary charge group without a primary charge group to surround except in fields primary or armory, which is complex and we'll get on and we'll just gloss over that one for now. 
in general, secondary charge groups will be drawn smaller than the primary charge group. Give some examples and talks about some types. So types can include what we have here. So looking at this, do we have a field division? Um, Q, you want to jump in on this one, mate? Do we have a field division? Yes. You sure about that one, mate? Because I'm seeing... Okay, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, this we is... have an ordinary, we don't have field division. Okay. <laughs> Bingo. Bingo. Um, this, uh, this is an ordinary. It has an associated field division where it divides the field up into three separate tinctures. And they could be red, white, and blue, if you so desire. Um, this one, however, the field remains red. It is not a divided field. It is all ghouls all the time. We have a primary charge group, and that is the central ordinary. Uh, Hugh, do you care to have a hazard as to what this primary charge group may be called, what it might uh, be part of? Feel free to describe it in common English if you don't know the blasting term. Common English upside down Why the, the uh, uh, pollen inverted. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. So we've got this pollen inverted in the middle. That's our primary charge group. Do we have a secondary charge group? And how do you tell? Yes. There's three hands around the pollen. Bingo. How can you tell that they're <laughs> secondaries in particular? It's around the primary. Bingo. And? <laughs> And they're all still in the field. These are your, um, oh, they're your pickles and your hamburger, where you've got the, the primary charge being the, uh, the slab of meat in the middle. Um, or this will be probably make more sense to the Australians, but if you go down to your like local neighborhood pizzeria and you ask for an Aussie style pizza, they'll often crack an egg in the middle of the pizza. And so this crack, this egg, cooks up like a fried egg in the center of the field, and that's your primary charge. And all the little bits of pepperoni around the outside, those are your secondaries. Interesting. I might have to try that sometime. <laughs> oh, mate, it's awesome. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a of... Oh, yeah. Yeah, egg on pizza. It's like, it's a hello tradition. I have, I have trouble trying to convince some of the U.S. heralds about pie floaters, let alone egg on pizza. Anyway. Pie floaters, that's a different culinary expedition. Um, getting back onto the task, though. Yep, we've got uh, an undivided field. We have, a, we have a primary charge group, and we have a single secondary charge group. And these, these ones are nice and simple and easy to, to spot. Pie floaters are amazing. Um, look, to describe them, okay, so I'm told that... Regular bog standard meat pies aren't particularly common in the US, but they're like mince meat, mince meat and gravy, uh, ground beef and gravy generally, cooked inside a, um, a fairly durable pie uh, coating, like pastry coating. You get one of those cooked and hot, you put it at the bottom of a bowl and you pour mushy pea soup all over it. Maybe add some tomato ketchup as well to taste, uh, possibly some Tabasco sauce if you like it with a bit of kick. I, I like mine with a bit of habanero myself. You're trying to and freak yeah. people out now, Patty. Yeah. Right. It's awesome. <laughs> Next me here's a kind of a preserve, spice preserves that you can put in the pie around Christmas time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty much. But um, yeah. So keeping on, keeping on. What's, what's my next example of this one? All right. I'm going to ask James again. James. Do I have a field division? I'm going to say that's an ordinary over the top, isn't it? The chevron? Yep, that's an ordinary. Um, do I have a divided field? Or is my field in one, one piece? Um, good question. Do you reckon there might be a dividing line hidden behind that chevron? Or is the field the same on either side of the chevron? Feels the same on either side of the chevron. Yeah, so there's not likely to be a dividing line under there. So yep. we can say it's an undivided field that just yep. happens to have a chevron on top. On yeah. Top. Yep. Yeah, beauty. 
Um, so the Chevron, you reckon that's what type of charge group and why? That's the uh, primary because it covers the center of the shield. Yep, perfect. Um, do you reckon there's a secondary charge group present? If so, what is it and why? Uh, there is a secondary, it's the ram's heads, and it's because it's on the field and around the um, the other one. <laughs> yep, no worries. Um, you see that the, 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 the ram's head and base is drawn a little bit smaller. Is, yes. Do you reckon that's, that's just so it'll fit, or do you reckon that's important? That's a good question. I would have said it's just a fit, but um, yeah, <laughs> is that important, or is it just... And that's just a fit. No just worries. Fit, yep. yep. How how you put together um, how you put together various uh, charges on a field to make them fit the field. This is something that is left up to the artist's discretion. Um, it's considered poor form to use things that are wildly different sizes. Um, it's often referred to as the sword versus dagger rule. Um, ah. Additionally having swords and daggers on the same um, same device submission is frowned on because how can you tell if it's, a, if it's a sword drawn small to fit or a dagger drawn big because it's got a lot of room to fill? It's, yeah, size is one of those things that's a bit of a, a, bit of a gut feeling, a bit of a, you, you've got to, you know, give it a bit of thought, give it a bit of bash, no worries. And play around with it a bit. No worries. I uh, also noticed that we've had someone join us. Tristan, how you doing? Um, we're going through charge group theory at the moment. Are you okay with what primary and secondary charge groups are? Uh, I do believe I am. Fantastic. Thought, I'm sure you will point it out to me. No worries. So we've been going through uh, the examples I prepared earlier. And so I reckon... We're pretty much covered this one. James, do you want to have a bash at blazoning this one? Uh, Argent? Ooh, uh, I don't know. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> don't look gold. silvery to me, mate. Gold. <laughs> Bingo. Um, yep. Um, a Chevron Sable. Three Rams Heads Sable. Very close. Very close. And part of it is I neglected to talk about joining words because you've got different two separate charge groups here. You've got the primary charge group, which is the Chevron, and the secondary charge group, which is the Rams heads. And you need some way of delineating those two in, in text, in, in the verbiage. And here I would choose to use the word between. Yep. Just two points, Patty. Um, it's halfway through your block, yep. and somebody's music is playing, so that will affect the recording. So I'm not sure whose music is playing in the background. It's only occasionally, but it's um, coming through the speakers, which will go through the recording. Okay. Yep. Fair enough. No worries. Um, actually, I'm not doing too bad for time. I'm about halfway through the examples I picked out. Awesome. So we've got our joining word here being between um, another thing that we tend to do in SEA heraldry to cut down on repetition because if you repeat the same term it can it just sounds dodgy it don't sound nice um so we what we tend to do is leave out describing the tincture until the end of all of the charges of that tincture are described so in this case this the chevron and the ram's heads are both sable so we tend to not define the chevron explicitly as sable, but we would keep on going and define the chevron and the ram's heads as sable. So to put it all together as an example, uh, go with, I would just blazon this as, or a, a chevron between three ram's heads to sinister sable. Because one of the things you also need to describe here is the direction that the heads are pointing. Uh, Driston, I believe you had your hand up for a moment, mate. Yes, alternately, I was, I, I've also seen that um, you can uh, put the tincture on the first charge and then put an of the second or of the first for the uh, 
that set those three ram's heads. Mm -hmm. so I've seen that too. It as, or um, be, between three ram's heads, Sable, mm -hmm. a chevron of the second. Ah, what you've done there is you've mixed up the order of the charge groups we tend to do in SEA Heraldry in that we've defined, we define the primary charge group as the oh, central ordinary. And because primary, define, describe that one first in the text, then uh, if I was to use the of the first of the second, another one you might see is of the field, uh, which is whatever the field tincture is, you make that charge that tincture. Um, we could go or a chevron sable and three rams heads contorni of the first. Yes. On the other hand, if you got to write a lot of stuff down and you're in a hurry, the fewer words yeah. you write, the better. The fewer keystrokes, the better. So I one of the, the games I have been told sometimes gets played at uh, known World Heraldic Symposia Feasts and I was, I was looking forward to being able to give this one a go in person this year because it's, it, it's due to happen on the continent. Um, is you put up some 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 devices and you see who can blazon it in the fewest words. Have they ever done the, the um, opposite? Give you a blazon and who can draw it the quickest? Uh, I think that's that's that sometimes happens. I've never done that one myself. I also do like the um, 12 Days of Page School song where you do out the actions. It's a great bit of public outreach for, for Heralds as well especially being a good little bit of aerobics as well. All right, I'm going to move on to this one. Yes, and once again, I have another same level of complexity of device from a heraldic perspective. So, Nicolette, do I have a field division here? No. Sorry, I didn't yep. realize that. Um my mic had changed over to Nikki, not Nicolette. Sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, no worries. It's all good. Um, so no field division. Do I have a primary charge? Yes. Which one is it and how can you tell? It's the wolf sable mm -hmm. and it's um, in the centre of the, the field itself. Fantastic. Um, can you care to have a stab at identifying what posture that wolf might be in? Rampant. Bingo. How can you tell rampant? My device is in it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's a classic standing pose for lions and um, some beasts. So mm -hmm. Rampant that. is a, a posture that's restricted to quadrupeds. Uh, you have one back, one hind leg on the ground and the other three are like raking the air and all attacky and angry, right? Rampant. Um, is anything... There is also a, uh, a point that um, he should also be erect, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, if uh, rampant is easy to mistake for some similar uh, postures such as salient, which is like leaping forward, like you like a horse going over a jump sort of thing. Um, Segrient is also that sort of pose too, isn't it? But that's winged beasts because mine is actually winged, but yeah. Bingo. Segrient is rampant, but with the wings up and displayed out the back end. Yeah. Right. Um, do we have a secondary charge group there, Nicolette? Yeah, the uh, fleur de -lis. Mm -hmm. How can you tell they're the secondary charge group? They're surrounding the outside of the primary charge. Mm -hmm. And? They're still on the field. Bingo. You need both of those criteria for the secondary charge group. And they're smaller. Mm -hmm. And they're smaller. Yeah. Yeah. So would you get to have a stab at doing the blazon on this one? Remembering the, uh, the important joining word I left out for James, unfortunately. Is that Argent? <laughs> yep. Uh, wolf Rampant Sable. Three fleur de -lis ghouls. You got one word missing. And you need to have the right joining word to say, I've stopped talking about the primary charge group and now I'm talking about the secondary charge group. No, I don't know. I'd go with between in this case. 
Oh, the wolf is between three, okay, three fleur de lis yep. schools. Okay, yep. yep. It's one way of, it's the way I can say, look, I've got the wolf and it's in the middle and there's three fleur de lis around it. And the three fleur de lis, they're in the regular boring way you'd put three fleur de lis around one big thing in the middle. But I've got to say that they're around that one big thing in the middle. And the word I use for that one is between. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a one way of thinking about this is it's a sentence. You, you're, you're literally talking, talk, talking to someone about this. And so you need to have those, those all important grammatical constructs for joining words to be able to say that you're stopping one, um, one part and moving on to the next part of the blasm. And most of them in blasm, they're actually, they're fairly simple things that, um, that would that you just get used in daily daily life. Um, as Shinjo says, yes, it's it's basically a code. This is an information exchange medium. This is encoding a graphical um, um, in a graphical communications medium into text. So yeah. Right. Next example. Is it something different? Ah, it's the friend we saw earlier being the wacky ass monster. So. Does this, so I'm going to go with Hugh again. Awesome. Hugh, do I have a field division in this case? Uh, no. Do I have a primary charge group? Yes. Um, what do you reckon the primary charge group is and why? Uh, the flaming ball. <laughs> yep, the weird flaming ball thingy with the damn chicken legs because I don't know. <laughs> The ergot must have been good that year. Um, do we have a secondary charge group present? Uh, I think are Sydney's considered a secondary charge group. They are indeed. Why do you reckon okay. they're considered a secondary charge group? Well, they're just kind of thrown on the field. <laughs> yeah. They're smaller, they're on the field, and they're all around the primary charge. So they meet the various criteria for a secondary charge group. The thing is, though, when we're blazoning a semi, we blazon it with the thing, the, 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 the field or the charge that it's strewn across. So I would, I would blazon this one as Sable Mullety Argent or mm -hmm. Sable Semi of Mullets Argent, a weird ass gold flaming beastie, rampant contorny. <laughs> And flame ghouls. <laughs> flame ghouls. Yeah. Yeah. So I deliberately picked this one up, not because of the, the weird fire breathing beastie, but because uh, uh, a field that is a semi. Are people cool with that? You don't blame the, um, the term you... flame, do you? You can. In this case, the fact that it's a different, different tincture implies that having it being flame. Uh, Flamant ghouls is important to the submitter. Um, yeah, it could be flaming whatever whatever color they want. It could even be flaming fur if they really were keen and wanted to do a little tiny ermine spots on it. I ain't gonna judge. I'm just gonna shake my head and say they get they need too much work on themselves. Uh, Shinjo, did you have a question, mate? Uh, it was um, after rampant the term you use was that refer to the fact that it was in reverse bingo contorni um literally you know with turning um so it's facing to sinister so facing the viewer's right or the bearer's left um which you'll have the various uh victorian period sources saying it's the mark of a coward because it's running away from the part of the shield uh that you'd use to block with if you were right hand dominant holding the shield in your left hand, you'd block with the dexter edge. Um, so this is a running away flamey monster thing. Uh, yeah. Or dexter and sinister Latin for right and left. <laughs> Bingo. Bingo. So you can describe uh, the orientation as, uh, the, sorry, posture and orientation as either rampant contorni or rampant to sinister. Did that answer your question, mate? Yes. Fantastic. Awesome. All right. Another example. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that's pretty. Ooh, this one is pretty. And it has 
two secondary charge groups. How can I tell? Any ideas what charge group, secondary charge group number one might be? Tristan. Oh, you're muted, mate. Sorry, the four flowers buells. Mm -hmm. Why do you reckon they, they are a secondary charge group? Why do I reckon? Uh, well, they are not directly in the center of the shield, but they are surrounding it. Bingo. And I've got something that's... The edge of the shield, which is the oral at the, around the edge. Close. It's a bordure rather than an oral. Bordure, um, not an oral. But your argument for why those four flowers, that is exactly correct. Um, do I have a primary charge group, Tristan? Oh, sorry, Tristan. Um, additionally, uh, do I have a primary charge group on sorry, this coat of arms? Yeah, um, it's the cross. I'm just not sure the exact name of the that particular style of cross. And given that this is an introductory one, I'm not expecting everyone to know everything. No worries. For reference, this is a cross moline. Uh, it's meant to look like the strapping iron crossy thing on a mill wheel. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so we've got the cross moline is our primary charge. We have a secondary charge group in those four flowers. I said that there are two secondary charge groups. Any ideas what that second group might be and why? The border? Yep. Why do you reckon it's also a, a secondary charge group? Because it's surrounding the primary charge and it's entirely on the field. Mm -hmm. And it's entirely separate to whatever the hell's being done with the other secondary charge group. I picked this one out because you can have multiple secondary charge groups. You can only have one primary charge group, which is why we call it the primary charge group, or one of the reasons why, but you can have multiple secondary charge groups. And I'll go back to Cena and we'll talk through the rules on this one for a little bit. Um, several kinds of secondary charge groups can occur together in a design. Armorial designs with multiple secondary charge groups must generally match a pattern for period or arrangements of charge groups. And the types of secondary charges include peripheral ordinaries. This type of secondary charge group consists only of peripheral ordinaries, the chief, the bordure, the base, including the point pointed, quarters, cantons, gyrons, awls, double tresses, tierces, and flaunches. Feel free to go and have a look for images of these later on. Um, once again, the SCA Heraldry Primer is fantastic for this. A semi. This type of secondary charge group consists of charges strewn all over one part, uh, overall, or over one part of the field. Notice it's strewn over the field. Charges semi are almost in a se always se in a separate charge group from all other charges. Um, there's a couple of extra bits to go with this one. Cotices and endorses. Uh, I'm not sure I actually took what found an example of these in my that's rather 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 bad of me. I'm terribly sorry. Um coticing a, an ordinary is when you get your main ordinary in the middle and really skinny outliny bits separated from it. If I was to do, do no no haha. -ha. Okay. So going ahead a little bit to something we haven't covered quite yet, but you may have seen on other people's armory a bend like this, and then two narrow stripes, one on either side, going down like that. That would be a bend cuticed. If it's a pale, for some reason the pale is endorsed, but bends and bend sinisters and crosses and salt ears can all be cuticed. And they look Beautiful and fantastic. I just don't think I've got an example of one. I'm terribly sorry. You could draw one on the whiteboard, Patty. There's whiteboards available through the shared screen. Ooh. Annotate. All right, all right. Draw. I'm going to go with this one. All right. And this color. So, yeah. That would be adding... Imagine those are straight and parallel. Yeah. Those would be 
adding kurtices to this uh, to, to, to this uh, device. Yeah? Cool. Gonna get rid of that. If I head over to Cena. Yeah, I still got those bits of bits of white there, but yeah, stuff it, she'll be right. Um, so kurtices and endorsers. Right, then we just get to other. So this is the grab bag for everything else that doesn't fall into one of these um, good but easily definable categories, which is like single charge in Canton, three a group of three charges around an ordinary, which we've seen a few times already. Yeah. So primary charges, something big, some things that are big, or a central ordinary. If it's not a central ordinary, then the single big charge or group of big charges must cross the visual center of the field. That's our primary charge group definition. The secondary charges, they are on the field, around or between the primary charge group, and generally smaller than the primary charge group. Almost always they are. There are some very niche cases, which I'm not bringing up because they've just, it's just poor form. Yeah, your primary charge needs to be big, bold, and butch. Your secondary charges need to be big enough to be identifiable. Do I have any questions from anyone on primaries and secondaries? Awesome, because now we get to start going down the rabbit hole that is tertiary charge groups. Tertiary charge group is a charge or group of charges which are entirely on another charge and are not on the field themselves. Tertiary charges may be found on other types of charge groups, including an overall charge group, but not on maintained charges. By maintained charge, I mean, I mean it's being held by something. So I can put a charge on a primary charge group. The charge I've put on top of the primary charge, that is a tertiary charge. I can put multiple charges on top of my primary charge and that is a tertiary charge group. I can have separate tertiary charge groups, but not on the same charge. So I can have one tertiary charge group on a primary charge a different primary charge group because let's say I have secondary charges, I can charge my secondary charges. I can charge each of the, my secondary charge groups, each with a different tertiary charge group if I want to make things very difficult and very complicated for everyone trying to do anything with that device. And, and I've got some examples where we start from the simple and the basic and we make things more and more complicated. And this is how I was kicking off with. And I'm gonna take off the annotate. Clear, clear all drawings. Awesome. So I have here a nice, simple, beautiful to look at, clean, lovely coat of arms. And Shinjo, do I have a divided field? No. Do I have a primary charge group? Yes. What charge is my primary charge group? The bend. Mm -hmm. Do I have any secondary charges? No. Again, correct. Do I have any tertiary charges? Yes, the roses. Fantastic. How many of them are there? Four. What tincture are they? Papara. Are they doing anything special or they're just being happy roses? They're seeded and barbed. Mm -hmm. What, um, is there, are they seeded and barbed in a particular tincture or the same and, as the and, and, and mm -hmm. How would you go about putting the blasm together for this one? Making uh, sure to, to realize you need to be able to define where the tertiary charges are. I'm just trying to remember, is this the band sinister or is it regular? This is a regular band. Okay. So we have Papur. Yeah. A, a band azure. Oh, that's done with blue to me. No, 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 no. I remember this because we actually talked about front search recharges with the New South Wales logo. Yep. Yep. Uh, so we have Papur, 
Yep. Three barbed and seeded roses per per on an azure bend. <laughs> oh boy. Close. You mix things up and that's not azure because azure is blue. That's no, no, I mean argent. Argent. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry. That, cut, that tripped me up a few times when I was new to this game as well. No worries. But what you've another one of the main things you did was you mixed up your 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 blazoning order. Um and by that I mean your primary charge group always goes first. Mm. You do need to denote where those roses are though, and you denoted that in the correct using the correct terms. It's on. Yeah. I would go with per pure on a band argent for roses per pure. Okay. I'm just saying all, all the roses purple, just all of it. And that's, that's what I'm seeing here. The seeds, the, the thorns, the everything is purple in the rose. Um, I, you notice that I've had, I used purple twice, but there was something of a different tincture in between the two that I had to blazon as being a different tincture. Does that make sense? Yeah. Would you put barbed, uh, barbed and seeded? Usually, well, if I if if it was a diff if the barbs if the, if 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 the the thorns on the rose so these little bits around here if they were a different tincture mm. and similarly the seeds if they were then yeah yeah you can well do this. Um, not everyone wants to have coloured contrast in the little fiddly bits inside the rose because let's be honest it'd be a pain. Um, but some people do. For example, I'm going to wait till that slides back up so I can get to the next one, which is, ha ha! Ah. Right. So, given that I threw you in the deep end the last time, and that that this is a very, very similar coat of arms, would you like to have a bash at blazoning this one, Shinjo? Okay. Um, we have ghouls. Yep. Um. A bend argent. No. You close, but what's the what? What? How would you? How do you define where the roses are? Given that you've got to say that they're on a bend, that they're on a bend first. Right. The bend is the important part for the for the first thing to to blazon. I, I can't remember. Sorry. Three field. F field denoting that there's uh, that there's a tertiary then mm. describe what the primary is. Oh, so, well, we, go, we go on a bend, argent, three go. roses, ghouls, barbed, argent. I'd say seeded argent, because those seated, look like sorry, seeds, sorry. not thoughts. Yes, see, seeded argent, yes. But bloody well done, mate. Nice. Yeah, nice. it talks a bit like Yoda. Yeah, yeah. And you'll see why you need to be why you need to build things up in this way as I get to more and more complicated examples. Because I managed to find an example in the Lock Arc Roll of Arms, which has a primary charge group that contains a tertiary charge group, and then a non-peripheral secondary charge group that has also got separate, different tertiaries. Alright, so moving on to the next example. We've got one with a secondary charge group as well. So I'm going to oh, Nicolette, would you like to give this one a go? Are we thinking they're wolves? Dogs, oh, yeah. wolves? Yeah. The, 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 the tail doesn't look floofy enough to be a fox, so I'm I'm going to go wolf on this one. Yeah. But um, we'll, we'll begin at the beginning, like begin with the with the base of your sandwich. Um, the field is it divided? Do you reckon? No. Why do you think it is an undivided field? I'm not saying you're wrong. I just want to know why. Oh, you've got the bend on it. Mm -hmm. but I was thinking that was as a charge, though, isn't it? Or is it it is a charge. charge? Yeah. This is this is this is me. It's a little bit of a trick and leading question. It is an undivided field. You're you're very correct. 
the way I the way you tell is you sure you've got this uh, this bend in the middle, but the field on either side of the bend is the same. So there is no field division hiding behind there. Yeah. As an as a counter argument, as, as a, sorry, not a counter argument. As another example, yeah, you can have a bend, but you can also have a field divided bend sinister. So imagine it being divided diagonally the other way with you know red and gold on each side of that division line. And then you've got your black band across there. So you can have, and you can also have the dividing line hidden behind the ordinary. So it's all, you always need to define the field first before you then go on to the primaries. So we, we've got our field argent. Do we have a primary charge group? I would say the two wolves, but they're around, actually no, the, um, the bend would be the, primary charge because it goes across the center bingo with the wolves around it which would be secondary and the third yep. of these would be tertiary because they're on top of the bend yep these yep. this is all correct all good at all good identification now here comes the hard part how do you put that into a blossom uh, argent uh, Oh, I don't know whether to do the bend or the wolves. Um, <laughs> well, which one's the primary charge? The bend. So you do the bend first. The bend does have tertiary charges on it, though. So you've got to define the. You got, you've got to let people know that the there are these uh, tertiaries on top of the bend before you get uh, as as part of defining that there's a primary charge, right? Yeah. So yeah. argent. On a bend sable, two fleur de lis argent between two wolves' schools? I don't know. Very close. <laughs> Very close. But, and here's Not where it gets wacky. It? <laughs> you got primary, secondary, tertiary, which implies you do the primary first and the secondary second and the tertiary third. Uh, and you've got the right grammar as well. I just got the order messed up a little bit. I would blazon this as Argent on a bend sable between two wolves, ghouls, two fleurs de lis, Argent. So I've said, at the st uh, so define the field first. Yep. I say that there is something on the bend, but the bend is between some other stuff. And then I say what's on the bend. Okay. Does does that make sense to everyone? I can. What I'll do is I'll quickly go back to the previous page that I linked that I clicked to like show this image on, and this is the blazon as registered. So argent on a bend sable between two wolves rampant ghouls, two flows to lee pale wise argent. Mm. The pale wise says there you know, in the pale wise direction rather than aligned with the bend, um, which it's good heraldic practice to define that um, because if you put something onto a, an ordinary, it aligns long axis parallel to the long axis of that ordinary. But you see field on a bend. So we've got the bend is defined first Sorry, the bend is the first charge described, but you're telling everyone there's something on it. Then that it's between the secondary charge group. Then you defi define and describe the tertiary that's on the primary. So this, this is one reason why there's a lot of people saying simple heraldry is good heraldry because mm. it makes it not only easy to make, but also easy to describe, right? So moving on to the next one, we've got Morosius. This one, uh, we've had a bit of a bash at it before. Um, ba, 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 ba. I don't want to call one a bit. Um, would uh, one of the people who've been muted for a bit, would anyone, uh, would any of you like to have a bash at this rather than me picking on the people at the uh, 
metaphorical front of the class all the time. Althea, I see you've unmuted yourself. Would you like to have a bash at this one? This is Althea, I'll give it a shot. Um, Fantastic. So, so the fields, so the fields, Azure and the primary charge would be the, um, the lion's jam uh, four. Yep. Um, and then, uh, and then I guess is the, is the chief an ordinary? The chief is an ordinary. Is it a peripheral okay. ordinary or a, or a central ordinary? Peripheral. Mm -hmm. Which means it has to be um, a... Because it's not crossing the center of the field. It's out, it's, out on the, it's out on the edges, whereas the lion's paw is in the center of the field. Bingo. So does that make the chief, because it's a peripheral ordinary secondary? Or otherwise? Yes. yes I'd it does. say secondary. And then, the, and then the bees on it um, would be tertiary. Yep. Fantastic. Good identification. Would you like to have a go at putting it all together in a blasm? Okay. So, um, Azure, um, Alliance, Jean, or, and I have no idea what to do with fingernails, but um, <laughs> in, in, um, on a chief, Argent, three wasps, sable, and ore. Yeah, nice. Nice. Bloody nicely done. Um, I can think of one thing I'd improve on that one, um, and that's a think. And I'm going to go click back to look at the blazon as registered on this one, because I can't remember whether the default position for Alliance Jamb is with the, the, the claws going down like an actual leg dropping down from a lion or if it's got it coming up to go clawing. Also, um, are the bees so, or wasps, is that a natural? So if you said natural, would that cover them saying instead of or and sable? Or not no? natural, but proper. Oh, proper, yep. Mm. yep. If it's something that exists in the real world, then defining it as proper, it gives, it's, you, you color it in in the same way it happens in the real world. Um, so a tree proper has brown bark and green leaves. Mythical creatures, like, like what colors are a unicorn? Having a unicorn proper is not going to fly, mate. Not even a Pegasus <laughs> proper is going to fly. <laughs> but here we go. We've got Azure, Alliance, Jump, Bendwise, Sinister, Cooked, Ore. So it's meant to be more like this direction along there uh, on a Chief Argent 3B Sable Marked Ore. So I, 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 I think that's, a, that's not a particularly good de depiction of the, you know, Bendwise Sable and that it's meant to be like a cat's claw, like reaching out and going, going, yeah, no worries. But um, yeah, yeah, good blasonry. Yeah, and I'd left it, okay, yeah, and I'd left out the sinister, yeah, trying to, you know, rights and lefts get all confused in heraldry. <laughs> yeah, true. And this one, you've got, uh, uh, I'd imagine saying business center dexter means the claws would be pointing towards the dexter end of the shield. But, uh, you know, it's a good, good blasm, given this end blasm. Onwards and upwards, I reckon we've got a slight increase of complexity here with someone who has an odd swan fixation, who may well be me. Um, anyone want to have a go? Okay. Was that, uh, was that you, Hugh? You can have a go at this one, mate. Okay. Uh, so, begin at, begin at the beginning, we'll build things up. Okay. Do I have a field division? Propale. Mm -hmm. um, which one of those two tinctures would I blazon first for the propale part? Uh, sable and then Arshan. Yep, yep. Why? Because the uh, sable's on the right side of the shield. Bingo. And if I'm <laughs> painting this one out, I don't want to get black paint all over what I'm going to be doing white on because it's going to be a pain to paint over. Cool. So those, that's, that's my field. Do I have a primary charge group? You have uh, two spawns combatant. 
Bingo. Um, how would I describe the the posture of those birds? If you if you're not sure of the exact term, feel free to describe it in in common lingo. Well, they're definitely fighting. I think that's combatant. Yeah, very close. I say it should be combatant, but apparently only predators, especially predatory quadrupeds, get to be combatant. These <laughs> ones are roussant respectant, so they are like roused and angry and looking at each other. And if that ain't combatant, I don't know what is, but hey, I don't get to make the rules. All I got to do is teach them. Um, so that's how I describe their posture. How would I describe their tincture, their colors? Counterchanged. Counterchanged. For those who don't know, counterchanging is so if I've got one object over a line of division, or two objects around a line of division, or even more, you flip the backgrounds around. So I've got a white swan on a black background and a black swan on a white background. And as that old saying of the internet goes, everyone's got two swans inside them. One of them wants to attack directly and the other one wants to go around the flank and attack from there. So. And my advice is uh, quarterly ghouls nor an actor counter changed. Nice. Um, <laughs> do like a nice bit of counter changing and cuts down on the number of paint colors I got to buy, right? Okay. <laughs> So we've got a, we've, we've established that we've got a primary charge group. Do I have a secondary charge group? You have a uh, with your ghouls. Fantastic. Uh, on that secondary charge group, is there a tertiary charge group? Uh, Bazanti or bingo. Do I have any primary charges on? Uh, sorry, any tertiary charges on my primary charge group? I mean, no, it just looks like two swans. <laughs> yep. yep, and your eyes are not misleading you. There is nothing on my swans. So, how would you have a bash at putting this all together as a blasm? Uh, for pale, sable, and their giant. Uh, two swans, respect and recent. And all ghouls, Bendy. Close. You haven't defined the tincture of the swans, though. You missed out on that one. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's swans from perspective recent character. <laughs> Bingo. Bingo. And the blazon as registered is yeah, per pale sable and argent, two swans, recent respect and counter exchange within a border ghouls besanty. No worries. Again, upping the complexity factor. We have Titus Quintilius Calidus who is indeed a fan of Deadpool. <laughs> oh yes, you can do this. Um, yeah. Do I have, Tristan, haha, do I have a <laughs> primary charge group? Um, I would say it's the Escutcheon uh, that has the uh, pale and the two half roundels on it. Close, but no donuts. Unfortunately, okay. this one was really pushing uh, the limits of what you can do as simple geometric heraldry. There yeah. is a oh, it's okay. I see what it is now. I've got a field. What's my field? Vert. Vert. Cool. What's the primary charge group? It's a central ordinary on the field. The pale. Cool. I have two secondary charge groups. What's my first secondary charge group? Uh, the two half roundels. Bingo. How can you tell that they are a secondary charge group? Uh, they're closest to the primary. Bingo. They're on the field, they're around the primary, they're smaller than the primary, and we're going center outwards in this case with, with yeah. multiple secondary charge groups. My second secondary charge group, which one is it? Would be the Bordeaux. Mm-hmm. Do I have any tertiary charge groups on any of these groups, any of the previously mentioned charge groups? You have a treasure on the Bordeaux. Not quite a treasure, this is an oral. An uh, oral. Treasures come in pairs, generally, and they're real thin. Okay. So you, your border is your thick stripe that follows the edge. Uh, mm -hmm. The oral is a thinner stripe that is separated from the edge but follows the line of the edge yeah. and a tressure, double tressure, 
sometimes yeah. double trace your crown to flurry is a couple of very thin stripes that follow okay. the edge of the field. So, would you like to have a bash at putting this one together, Driston? Hey, we start with Vert. Yep. Uh, a pale, uh, a pale argent between two half roundels, argent, or a pale between two half roundels, all argent. Yep. And uh, aboard your. Or an oral sable on a Borgia Argent. I'd have put the, the Borgia before the all because the Borgia is a secondary charge group. And one thing you neglected to do was how am I um, how are my demi rondels, my half circles, how are they oriented? Is there any particular way they that you could describe that orientation to make it nice and easy to reproduce? I would know that I I would not know the term. Give give it in you know, some, know. Some, some common English if you if you you're not comfortable with the actual um, terminology. Round edges pointing outward. Yeah, yeah. Another way would be flats to center. Yeah. Um, this is one of those cases where there's. Uh, sometimes you, you know you got to define that orientation, but there's nothing really easy and simple on how you do it. So you basically you, you give it a good stab, and people look at that going, "Oh yeah, I can picture in my head how that works from the text." I, tr uh, I trust the person whose uh, device this is has been uh, roundly uh, criticized for it. Yeah, especially after after they got this one done, they wound up starting doing. Uh, they decided to get a badge done as a palette swap uh, with purple and gold as imperial pool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ow. But uh, Shinjo, you, you, if you've met uh, if you've met Titus, this is this is Archer over in Rowany. So he's yeah, a, I've heard of him. I haven't met him though. He's a likely lad. He's a barrel of laughs. Um, he would fit in well in the dialect of my youth, which other Australians consider to be a rather freer with profanity than most Australians are comfortable with, huh. to say nothing of people from less vocabulary liberal parts of the world. But anyway, we shall not dwell uh, and instead head on, head back to see what the blazon of this as registered was. We've got Vert. A pale between two demi rondels flats to center and on a border argent and oral sable. sable. Yeah. Nicely done. Very close there, Driston. Um, this is not an easy one to try and get your head around. And yeah, I would say uh, you look at this and you go, is that an escutcheon or is that a field? Or yeah, there was a lot of discussion on this one. Um, and you'll notice that we, because the pale, the demi rondels, and the border are all argent, and where the order of blazon puts them one after the other, rather than saying vert a pale argent between two demi rondels, flats to center argent, and on a border argent and all sable, we drop out those extra redundant argents. But we're also following the same pattern where we go field and any divisions there are, in this case, none. Describe the primary charge, describe the nearest secondary charge group, describe the other secondary charge group, and then describe the tertiaries that are on that dis that second secondary charge group by saying, and on a border argent. So I know that oral sable has to be on the border argent. Does that make sense to everyone? We all cool with that. Fantastic, awesome. Second last example. So, Raymond of Annan's arms. Wonderful chap. Lovely man. Complicated arms. Not the most complicated example I've got for you, though. Um, Gianna, go. Now, 32, okay. hmm? You've got 15 minutes. Quarter hour, no worries. So, uh, Shinjo, do I have 
a field division here or just a single piece of field? Uh, also, I believe you've uh, muted yourself as you stood up, mate. Um, it's not really a field division, but a chief. Yep, a chief is an ordinary. It's not a field division. Um, so yeah. just looking at the uh, stuff that's not the chief, does that look like a divided field to you? No. There's certainly a charge there, and that's the saltier, but there's no difference in the field around the saltier, correct? No. Cool. So, field is just plain argent. What's my primary charge? The saltier. Bingo. Does the saltier have any tertiaries on it? Yes. Can you describe it? Is it an eagle's head? Um, I'm looking at it and I'm seeing ears, so I'm thinking that's a griffin's head. Oh, griffins. Yeah, normally, well, griffins are funny things anyway. Yeah. We'll go, we'll go Griffin for now. And, you know, if we're wrong, we'll find out when I click through and show the blazon as, as registered. So, all right. Do I have a secondary charge group? Yes. What is it? The blue uh, as your chief. Mm -hmm. Is there something funky about that chief? It's got some sort of castle edge. Mm -hmm. This is the first complex line of division I've, show, I've thrown up. A complex line of division is exactly what it says on the tin. It's not a boring ass straight line of division. It's a line of division that is doing something interesting. In this case, this is, an, this is a chief embattled. This is an oh. embattled line. There are a large variety of lines of division. Again, check out the SCA primer. And you can see things like embattled, dovetailed, rayony, and all bunch of other cool ones. So we've got a uh, chief azure embattled. Does it have a tertiary charge group? Yes, uh, three knights helmets. Yeah, uh, honestly, three helmets. I, th I think those are frogmouth helms or jousting helms. Yeah, we'll just call them helms and let the artist do whatever damn helm they please. I mean, it could be a Norman conical helmet. It could be a uh, Hounds, Houndsgall bassinet. Uh, it's, it's a helmet. Hats, I, hats don't know my hat. I don't know my helmets. <laughs> eh, I'm not really confident. It's just a helmet, right? No worries. So would you like to have a bash at putting it all together? What's the crust thing called again? Saltier. Saltier. S A L T I R E. So you often hear it referred to as saltire, but depending on okay. how you want to do that, that letter I, I'll go with So saltire. we have as uh, argent yep. uh, on a cross saltier, a griffin's head or. What tincture is the saltier before you go on? So on a, a, a saltier ghouls, um, a griffin's head or. Yep. And then we have, oh God, we got, is it Azure or in, in Chief? Not quite. In um, Azure embattled in Chief? Not quite. A Chief. A Chief, Azure embattled. Three helmets. <laughs> uh, uh, Argent. Bingo. Fantastic. Nicely done. You described the field, the saltier, mentioning the saltier had something on it, a thing on the saltier, and then there's a peripheral ordinary, and it's not, you don't need a between, you don't need an around, you don't need a within, it's and a chief embattled as your, and on a chief embattled as your three helms argent. Nicely done, Shinjo. Let's go and see what the emblazon as registered is. And we've got Argent on a saltier ghouls, a griffin's head erased or the erased part is, see how the, the head's got little floofy bits rather than being straight. Okay. Um, I'll see you. Oh. If it was straight, it would be cooped as though it was cut off by a blow. Cool being to, to cut, to blow, to, to hit. 
and on a chief embattled azure, three great helms argument. I wouldn't call those great helms, but eh, I don't care. They're, they're hats. Nicely done. Nice. And now, for the most complex example. This one. Ah, uh, Nikki, <laughs> mate, yeah, you're feeling thanks. game. <laughs> what do you reckon um, the field tincture might be in this case? Vert. I'm thinking, well, would... actually, I don't know whether it's a chief and a base or whether it's a um, fess. This is why we don't tend to register chief and a base. Okay, so it would be, um, or... Is the background Bingo. in? Is that density or wave? No, that's, that's wavy. At the, um, <laughs> yeah, it's one that's an absolute bugger to draw. <laughs> this is nebulae. This is meant to look like the edges of a cloud. <laughs> Who is this? Um, yep. So you've got the rondelles have got trefoils in them. Um, mm -hmm. So what does that make the rondelles? Oh, sorry, what is the, do we have a primary charge present? If we're thinking the line across the middle is a line of division, then that would be the primary charge. Well, it's not a line of division. It would be the primary oh, charge. It is the primary charge, sorry, yep. Um, yep. Yeah, so we've got a fess in the middle. Those rondelles, what do you reckon? What charge group do they fall under? I'd say that the rondelles are secondary, but the um, trefoils are tertiary. Correct. And so that, is the griffin. Also correct. So what we have here is an undivided field. We have a primary charge with a complex line of division. That primary charge has a tertiary charge group on it. And on the secondary charge group around the primary, we have a separate tertiary charge group. So I had to go searching for this one, uh, and I'm very happy I found a tertiary charge group on a non-peripheral secondary. And given that this is Sir Brucey, uh, it's one that, you know, you might have seen around at festival had you been there over the years. Shinjo, I know you're, uh, you, you haven't been around for as many years, you might not have met the lovely man who is Sir Brucey. Uh, I asked Brucey to be his squire 20 four years ago yeah. <laughs> yeah you don't know his heraldry <laughs> fie fie I don't, I don't remember the trefoils but i remember the griffin <laughs> yeah but anyway want to have a bash at the blazon for this one mate oh, um so or yep um i'm thinking density oh no so i'm a Nebulae, not density. Density. I, I don't think it's density. I think density had points, but um, yeah, yeah, it's nebulae. Nebulae, oh, nebula. not, okay, yeah. not density. Um, nebulae. Vert. <laughs> Three. Oh no. Uh, so field, no, you've got that one right. Yeah, and um, then the um. Rondelle. To find that there's a, a tertiary on the primary before the, the primary. Okay, so... Um, mm -hmm. On a... On a fess... <laughs> nebulae, oh my gosh. On a fess nebulae... Between? No. Between is the right word, but you're missing one. What tincture is the fess? Vert. I thought mm -hmm. I said vert. Sorry. I uh, if you if you had, I'm sorry. I, I, no, no, I that's alright. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and then between. between. Uh, would you say four rondelles? I'd say or four would you rondelles. But As you are. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I haven't got the. I don't know where to have put the trefoils in at all. <laughs> yeah, this is this is one reason why I put this one up and why I am happy to stop you now and leap in on this because this one, this is a bugger. You don't often see this for very, very good reason. It's 
complex, it's difficult to blazon precisely. This one, you, you, you started off really well there, Nikki. I'd go with or on a fess nebulae vert between four rondels, azure, three and one, each charged with a trefoil, argent, a griffin, segrient, or. So I've had to define that, the, that each of those secondaries is charged with something before I could go back to describing what the heck is on the primary. And we've got less than five minutes left too. I'm just letting you know, sorry. Yep. Um, what I'll do is I'm audio. gonna- audio, um, as I said, we've only got a few minutes left. Yep, that's my one last thing in the formal bit is to the blazon as registered is or on a fest neighborly vert between four hertz. Hurt oh. being the special word for Rondel Azure because it looks like a bruise. Three and one, each charge with a trefoil, Argent, a Griffin, Segrient, or. And that would be Brucey, wouldn't it? There'd be a play on. How yep. wonderful. Brucey. Yeah, nice. <laughs> so that brings me to the end of the formal part of my class. Uh, this is a very rough introduction to how to blazon in the SEA, covering charge group theory as well to form the basis okay. of how and why we put together the blasons the way we do. So field, define the field, define any divisions, define the primary charge. That would also include its orientation, whether it has a tertiary on it, its posture, its tincture, how many of them are there? what arrangement on the field they might be if that's special and weird. And I have deliberately haven't put any of these out here because this is an introductory for a lesson. You then need to describe the secondaries that are on the field. There can be multiple secondary charge groups. The first one you describe is the one around the primary. This, any additional charge groups then get described. Peripheral charge groups are always the last secondary charge group des described. Tertiary charge groups being charges that go on other charges also must be described in such a way that makes sense based on what charge group they are put on. Charges that go overall are always right at the very end because you've got all your descriptive cheese and overall, your simple overall charge. So that's the summation of the last two hours in two minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. I will be taking questions. Addy, do you have a handout that you want to put through with the hair um, into with the recording or not? Um, not so much. No, no. I, I figured I would do this with drawing a lot of examples from uh, from the lockout roll of arms, as well as throwing shout outs back towards senior appendix I. Um, rather than doing a very long and involved handout. Uh, no actual formal handout uh, with this one. No, that's fine. I'll just say that we've got a I, Do heralds generally like simple heraldry? Oh, yes. <laughs> simple is good. Simple makes it easy for you. It makes it easy for us. It makes it easy for everyone to see who you are, what your heraldry is. I know Shinjo, you have your two uh, two open Japanese fans as yes. your uh, submission under uh, under it's being kicked up the chain, I believe. Um, yes, yeah, uh, Popo, two two folding fans, Argent pale in pale, and that's um, it. Can I yeah. just interrupt? Sorry, thank you guys to all of the because um, I know that in the states it's saying that people are saying it's over after midnight and things. Um, yeah. The classes start again tomorrow morning, um, our time. <laughs> um, at uh, sorry, at ten a.m. Unless you're a principal herald for your kingdom, mm -hmm. which then starts at nine a.m. Victoria time. So the ten plus hours. So currently it's four o'clock Victorian time p.m. on a Saturday. So this will be ten a.m. on Sunday. Okay, so. I'm going to stop the recording if that's all right. If you can keep talking, I don't mind. I'm just going to stop the recording now. No worries.